Hey, how you going? I'm Greg Lumley and uh, this is just a simple montage that I'm going to show you how I did. Of course, there are 100 million ways to do things like this in Photoshop. This is what I did and it's always nice to see how people do certain things. Step one was uh, done within Lightroom, basically just selecting the images and applying a global uh, field to them. It's really important that you don't put any vignetting on the images because obviously then when you start to blend the edges of the wall behind, it's going to make it really, really difficult and it's not going to look natural. Uh, as you can see, there's also a yellow washing line there, which I'll tidy out, but this worked out to be a really great marker for the rest of the images and allowing me to get the perspective correct. Pressing Control E will allow you to actually open them into Photoshop. It creates an individual file and automatically stacks them. I see a lot of guys use Lightroom. They output all of their images to uh, JPEG and then they open in, them in Photoshop or they open them all in Bridge. You don't have to do this. Okay, so now that they're all open in Photoshop, I take one image using the crop tool. I simply just extend the crop way beyond. This is going to create the main canvas. So this is going to be the end montage. Now I go to each image and I crop out the section that I'm going to use. Control C and I then go back to my main image as you can see over here. Control V and I paste it. I do the same with all of the other images. Something that I do here is I get them more or less the same size, rather a little bit bigger than a little bit smaller. And it's just really a more or less size because we're going to actually start correcting the sizing and perspective at a later stage. The idea is just to get everything into the montage as a starting point. It works really well to adjust the opacity of the layer so that uh, you can see the image underneath it when you're doing this. Something that I also do is that once all of the images are pretty much laid down is I select them all, put them into a group. You do that with control G and then I duplicate that group. That's so that if I mess anything up, I at least have something that I can go back to without having to reopen all of those images. Okay, so now all the images have been roughly placed on the canvas. What I now need to do is get all of the perspectives right. I need to make sure that for each image, uh, Jennifer looks like she is the same size. And of course, that uh, wouldn't happen when you're zooming in, zooming out and doing all kinds of things. Uh, in this case, it worked really well. I simply used the bottom of the wall where it met with the concrete. And then I aligned the washing line that was directly behind Jennifer uh, up as well. This gave me a good reference for size and also really, really good marker points, which meant that once I'd done all of this, uh, the perspective and image sizes wouldn't look like she was a giant one minute and a, a tiny little person the next. All the images are now the correct sizing. All I now need to do is to start placing them in the sort of order that I want them to. Uh, as you can see, I'm still using the, uh, the opacity that's lower, which means that the layer that I'm moving around is quite transparent. And that is so that I can see what's happening underneath. This gives me an idea of what I'm working with. Uh, and as you can see, it's all starting to come together, albeit very roughly. Great, so all of the images are now lined up. Now I'm going to start putting it together. And the first thing I'm going to do is remove this washing line. Obviously, I don't want it there. Uh, I start by hiding all of the layers and individually then just removing it. In this case, I just used the spot healing tool. Had a really nice surface to work with and the spot healing tool literally cleaned up perfectly with no additional uh, work required. Awesome. Now that I've removed the washing lines or as much of them as I need to remove, you need to create masks for each of your layers that you're going to work with. Now all you need to do is uh, start uh, putting your layers on top of each other. Remember to put them to 100% opacity. And what you're going to do is select your paintbrush tool and you are going to start to slowly paint out uh, the areas you don't want. I often use a brush that is a sort of 30 to 60% opacity and a nice big feather. This allows you to actually blend in the areas really, really nicely, making it look a lot more realistic. As soon as all of the images were lined up, I sort of realized that there were some images that were just a little bit too similar to each other. So I decided to remove one of them. Now that I sort of had this configuration, I decided that uh, the two on the right also weren't really working 
either. So I decided to put one on the left hand side and have the, the sort of curtsy shot in the middle and that actually worked really really nicely. Final step, uh, clean up the crop and as you can see I need to do a little bit more tidying up uh, because I've moved the image over to the left. Uh, and that's easily done by just blending. Uh, using layers is just the most amazing thing and in fact if you are new to Photoshop I cannot recommend enough. Start working with layers and masks. Uh, as you can see I don't really name my layers. Uh, I just find that it, I generally work through the images quite quickly so I don't need to do this. Uh, I think that if I was working very long term on images I'd be a lot more diligent in doing so. Okie dokie, so back to Lightroom and here's the image. I tidied it up in terms of cropping and added the filter that I'd used throughout the rest of the shoot uh, just so that it matched up. And uh, I must be honest, I think I like it without the filter but I also like it with the filter. Uh, I guess it's just a matter of taste. Either way it came out really nicely and it looks pretty fun. My final step was to get it to a 1-1.5 ratio which I just simply did uh, in the crop in Lightroom. Of course I didn't have to do this but I wanted it to match up with the, with the rest of the images that were actually sent along with the shoot. Well there you go, this is the final image cropped to fit the video. Thanks for watching.